Hello, book lovers. Today, I want to share my thoughts on A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss, which is the second book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I recently listened to the audiobook version on Audible and I have to say, it was quite an experience. A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss is the second book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series and is a thrilling and action-packed fantasy novel. The story picks up where the first book left off, with Fair, the protagonist, dealing with the aftermath of the events that took place in the first book. Fair is struggling with the trauma she experienced and trying to find her place in the world of the Fae. As the story progresses, Fair is forced to navigate political intrigue and danger, while also dealing with the complicated relationships she has formed with the different characters in the story. Along the way, she uncovers dark secrets and powerful magic that threaten the entire realm of Prithian. I was pleasantly surprised when I read A Court of Thorns and Roses last year because going into it, I knew it was a story with a strong fae presence. By this point in time in my reading career, I wasn't new to fantasy but I was still a bit picky about what sort of fantasy I liked and fae did not fall into that category of selected themes. But knowing how much I loved Sarah's Throne of Glass series and the Fae presence there, I dove into a Kotar and loved it. It had a bit of a Breaking Dawn ending so I wasn't quite sure where the second book would go but naturally I had very, very high hopes for it since I hadn't been let down by a Moss book yet. I won't sugarcoat it, it actually took me a really long time to get into the swing of this book. I was enjoying the plot but the beginning felt so incredibly dramatic and I just didn't feel like things were moving forward. There was a lot of time spent on Fair's PTSD from her time under the mountain and I absolutely understand and don't think that her traumatic experience should be just brushed over. I do felt like there was too much time dwelling on it though. Akamath isn't a short book and I think some pages could have been saved and still gotten the point across throughout a few sections in the beginning. If the book were more character-based instead of plot-driven, it might have been more appropriate but the plot really seemed to suffer because of this and this isn't the first time I felt this way in a Moss book either. I understand that these characters have gone through something that truly does change them but I felt like I was reading about totally different characters when I started Akamath. Fair and Tamlin were just not themselves and I think had a Kotar ended with a bit more of this shadow or if it had slowly creeped in throughout Akamath, it wouldn't have been as much of a surprise. I just really felt like I was thrown into a totally new environment and it was really hard for me to adjust to, especially since I had read a Kotar over a year before I got to start Akamath. I continued to have issues with Fair throughout the book. I don't know why, but she was just really bothering me. Instead of snarky, witty comebacks, I felt like everything with her was taken as an insult and she was constantly being defensive and kind of hated everyone. It was really hard to watch her interact with characters and I started to latch on to new, or new to the spotlight, characters like Rhysan and his gang. It did make me extra thankful for Reese coming onto the scene and shaking things up, though. The interactions between Fair and Tamlin were just unbearable and painful to read. Then I ended up on the flip side where although I didn't want Fair and Tamlin to still be together, I also felt really weird that Tamlin was almost totally absent from this book. He was there in the beginning and I won't speak of the ending but this book was straight up about Fair and Rhysan and it almost felt like a waste that we spent all that time building up a romance between Fair and Tamlin in a Kotar to have it totally change. I absolutely love where it went but it's confusing to understand why the fair slash Tamlin romance was so important and developed in a Kotar and why Rhysan wasn't more of a main character throughout that courtship to really get his foot even more in the door. I've followed the romances in Sarah J. Moss books quite well, I think, considering they're not always simple and straightforward. I know some people who have issues with love triangles or already have their OTPs with the first love interest really have trouble moving with the characters as they fall out of love or move from one interest to realize that their true match is someone else and I feel like I've followed along with that fairly easily. 
I can see where people feel like the romance in Akamath is a love triangle and I guess to a certain extent it is, but Fair also does not have interest in both men at the same time. It is quite complicated though, so if you're sensitive about triangles, you almost definitely won't like the romance. I personally loved the development of Rhysand as a love interest, especially once Fair really started to struggle with Tamlin. I found it telling that at the hardest points in their lives, Fair and Tamlin drifted apart and just couldn't find a way to even communicate instead of being able to rely on one another and get through a hard time together. That doesn't always mean that you shouldn't be with someone but in the case of storytelling, it's a pretty big sign that the main character isn't where they should be. I've heard this complaint from other Moss readers but this is the first of her books where I really felt like the romance started to take over the book. While I did love the new Rhysand slash Fair development, I felt like there was a lot of back and forth between them before anything major, finally, happened and that could have been cut down to some more meaningful interactions instead of repetitive, similar situations that happened more than a few times throughout the course of the story. Their romance actually is a very important part of the plot so it's not like I wanted it to be downplayed but I just felt like so many points of the large general story were pushed aside to develop the romantic moments and it started to turn more romance story than epic fantasy, and yes, there are some cheesy romance book-worthy moments. Let's just say this is not a young adult book, friends. There are some very explicit scenes so if you have teens or are directing slash teaching teens who are reading this series, you may not want to put this book directly into their hands. Not that I'm saying censor them, but... You yeah, know. Read it first so you know what you're giving them. The sections where the plot progressed were really quite delightful. Sarah J. Moss is still a master at layering stories and it's so interesting to see how much of a previous book comes back in a different light in a subsequent book. There were so many moments that the reader is able to recognize from Akamath and see from a different character's perspective or reassess it with more information and it makes the story that much deeper. Once things started to really take off around halfway through and a little thereafter, the book was simply addicting and I couldn't wait to see where the entire plot of the series was going. Sarah really does have an amazing ability to craft an overall series arc and it's so fun to watch that develop. The ending positively floored me and it was hard to remember why I had been so frustrated for a while throughout earlier sections of the book. So many things were revealed, actions taken, and trusts betrayed that I just really didn't know what was coming. The twists and surprises were epic and once again, I was left in utter anticipation of the next book.